So, this video is going to be kind of shaky because I'm driving, but I just had an epiphany. I don't know if you can see cash in the back. Hey, cash. Um, cash, get back. So, you know, make us crash. But, anyways, um, I know all of us are feeling confused or angry and upset about a lot of the things that are going on in the world today. You know, we all feel like we have to pick a side. I was listening to, hi gosh, I was listening to this podcast and, hold on, get back, get back, cash, get back. Anyways, and I was listening and it said that we're all kind of like in this tribe, like, like we have to pick a tribe. And that if you're not part of that tribe, you know, that's it. You can, you're either in my tribe completely or you're not. And I find that so true. I think that, um, you know, either you're on one side where you're super progressive and you're trying to save this world from racism and all the beliefs that they have, which, you know, we all know I'm not on that side. I'm on the conservative side. But um, I do believe there's this divide and that it hurts us to be divided. Um, and that it's sad that it's breaking up families um, because we have families that are on different sides and we're passionate about our views. And I had a big argument with a person in my family that I really care about recently. And it's hard when you feel so passionately about your beliefs in your country and um, me and this person had different views but we were super passionate about it and it got pretty crazy for a minute but you can see how it's tearing us all apart and I believe very strongly that the media and different groups of people are trying to divide and conquer us and did you do a very good job at it? You know, and those of us that don't want to be controlled and told what to do and, you know, forced to do things against the Constitution are quite upset about that. And, you know, I mean, I think the other side is as well. They don't want to be at war. They don't want this line that we've drawn that you have to pick a side. And I feel like, you know, we do have some common beliefs on each side. I think, you know, that we do believe in some of the same things, but some of the bigger things we don't agree on. And I've often thought, and I've often been asked, what do we do? How, how do we change? How do we make a difference, you know, as the middle class or, you know, whatever class that you're in? I don't know, you know, what we can do. And I had this epiphany today after listening to um, his podcast, and it is so true. And I don't think you have to be on this side or that side to know what you should do. Um, one of the things we were arguing about, me and this family member, was the riots and the way that certain groups are acting. And, you know, it all goes back to Martin Luther King. He protested peacefully and he made the biggest difference. He was a great man and did great things. And I think that we really need to take heed in that and think about that. And that's how you really show change. You don't burn down buildings and kill people and um, scream hate. You know, that's, that's not how you do it. Um, and I think that uh, Martin Luther King would be rolling in his grave right now if he's seen that that's how people were trying to make change. Um, there's a much better way to do it. And I thought, how in the world do we do this peacefully? You know, because the other side of the argument from what I understood of it was that's how you get changed. That's how you get heard. They're not being heard. And now that they've made this big scene and this big whatever, they're being heard and people are listening. And I think... Maybe that's what they think is happening, 
but the other side of this line is very angry and very upset and the conservative side they don't like to do things with violence they, they feel like that's wrong and I think that it's wrong too I mean war is a different story war is completely different and some might say this is a war anyways to get to my point of this whole thing when I was listening to this um, podcast it said that we can protest in another way and I, this isn't the exact verbiage but this is the way that I understood it and made it makes sense to me so these people that are controlling the narrative and the things that are happening in our world are the elite the rich they have these things that they want and they're changing well for instance you know we all a lot of us we like to watch movies we enjoy that that's a good time we like to watch sports we like to watch basketball we like to watch football you know, we like to watch golf. It's something that we're passionate about. But we're funding certain things by buying their merchandise and by watching them on TV and listening to the words that they're saying that are hateful and hurtful. And I'm not saying that all sports are that way, but we're seeing a lot more of it. Um, and if you want to make peaceful change, you need to protest. You need to boycott. So, for instance, for me, my way of peacefully protesting and saying that I think something is wrong without burning down buildings and um, overturning cars and killing people and stealing stuff from poor, you know, from businesses is. When Coke says something racist against white people and tells them to be less white and they're trying to promote this cancer culture, what do I think I should do? I should stop drinking Coke. I should stop buying Coke products because they are trying to promote something in this country that is hateful. When baseball puts BLM on their field, they're making a statement and you need to choose a side peacefully. I mean, why not peacefully? If you think that it is wrong what the BLM does, then you need to boycott people who are supporting them. Do you think that people are going to keep supporting them if they're losing money? Because in the scheme of things, it's all about money. It's honestly all about money and power. So, you need to know personally what your cause is. What makes you what makes you passionate? What are you what are you passionate about? What are the real issues in this country for you? Is it important to you that we have due process? Is it important to you that if somebody kills somebody that they're accountable for it? Is it important to you that people get treated the same? regardless of their color because we are not doing that and I know you're like oh yeah yeah you know it's a racist thing but they think that the racism is only on one side and it's on both and people need to open their eyes to it and I'm not going to tell you how to think or which way to think but you need to be passionate and you need to do something and I have been asked that by my in-laws who uh, sometimes lately have gotten into it with um what are you doing? And you know what? I I take that personally and seriously, and I and I fought with that, you know, because I do want to do something. I just don't know what to do. And I did not vote in this last election, and they like to use that against me. Um, I have my personal reasons for that, and I will share them with you. Um, I don't believe that the ballot system was right or fair. I, they changed um, voting laws in different places. They made them longer. They made it so that people didn't have to verify signatures. They did all sorts of things. And so when I moved to Nevada, um, being in another state, I couldn't vote in Nevada. And I had 
the option of doing a mail-in ballot, but I felt like the mail-in ballots would help the other side. In my heart of hearts, I felt like they were gonna cheat with the mail-in ballots, and so I wasn't going to help them cheat. And I wasn't in Utah when they did the voting, and so as far as I knew, I had no way that I felt comfortable voting. Um, because I did not do that, some people have made me feel, and maybe that's not their intent, but they have made me feel that because I did not vote, that my opinion doesn't matter because I'm not doing anything about it. And that's their opinion and that's fine, but that's my reasoning why I didn't do it. I'm very passionate about my beliefs and how I feel. Um, and now <laughs> I have figured out what I'm going to do and continue to do, and I have been doing it. Um, I don't, like I said about Coke, I will no longer buy Coke products. I will not, I mean, I used to love Coke Zero. That would be what we would buy and what we would drink. We liked the flavor, blah, 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 blah. But enjoying something that you like the flavor of and supporting something that you feel like is wrong are two different things. So I am 100% down to process in that way. I will not buy Coke products. For me, that's my way. I do, I'm not really a huge sports person, but I will not buy Nike. I don't like what they support. A lot of that has to do with Colin Kaepernick. A lot of that has to do with the devil shoes that came out that they claim they knew nothing about. There's a lot of things with Nike that I do not support and I, I will not buy Nike products. I am getting rid of Nike things that I have had in the past because I do not support Nike. That is how I'm protesting because I feel like that is a peaceful way to protest and to show your beliefs and not hurt people be peaceful. That, in my way, is following Martin Luther King, where he went out and he peacefully protests and let people know what he believed. I, after this whole thing that happened with uh, the basketball player who blasted the cop who saved the girl's life all over race, I do not support basketball. I will not support basketball anymore. My husband loves basketball. He loves watching basketball. And he has now decided to vote boycott it as well. If people can go and do things like that, that are on such a high level, who have um, so many young fans, old fans, um, and just such a loud voice out there, can go out there and say, yeah, you should totally kill this cop. It basically is what he said. I mean, he, he wrote, you're next, or whatever he wrote with this cop's face. He saved someone from being stabbed to death. And this is what they did based on race. That's not right. I have yet to see one thing from the basketball association saying that that was wrong. I'll, I, nothing. There's no consequence for him whatsoever. And if you think about that being reversed, if that was a white person that said those things against a black person, that would not be okay. That is not okay. And I feel like people think because of the horrible things that happened back in the day with racism, that we're not allowed to say that. And it's, it's not true. People who are African American or whatever, Spanish or whatever, think the same way. They think that the things that are happening in the world are BS. They are not on board with that. So I think that if you would like to peacefully protest and you want to know what you can do, that's what you can do. And pick your cause. Your cause doesn't have to be my cause. And because you're conservative or progressive or liberal or Republican or Democrat, pick. Pick out what your causes are. I don't appreciate the things that Disney are doing these days. I have canceled my Disney subscription. I will not buy Disney products. I love 
loved Disney. I love their shows. I love a lot about Disney. But I'm not going to support that. That is how I am peacefully protesting. And when I think about protesting, I think about how it wasn't easy, how people were scared, how people had to go out on hot days, on cold days, and do these things because it was a cause they really believed in. So if you are boycotting something that you've loved your whole life, you're doing something that is hard. And you don't necessarily have to be loud about it like I am, because I am, I'm loud about my beliefs. Because that was the only way in my heart of hearts that, that I could do anything. these people 
people with all this money are making them happen, you know? I mean, this may not matter to a lot of you, but Disney is changing Disneyland, you know? They're um, making it now so that the characters can cross-dress so that they can have tattoos and whatnot. And it sounds weird coming from me because I have tattoos and for me, I think the children are impressionable and that we don't need to complicate things. You know, I don't believe in puberty blockers and all that jazz that they're trying to push. Um, and a lot of that is religion. I believe that God created man and woman and that um, we are not at liberty to change that. Um, I also believe in not hating people for their choices and to love everyone. So if somebody feels as though they are not the sex they were born when they're an adult and they want to dress differently, I don't think we should hate them. I think we should love them. And if they decide to change in whatever way they decide, the same. But I don't believe that we should try and confuse them as babies. God put us on the earth to make our own choices. That's what I believe. And that we are here to show our true heart, you know? and our kindness in our heart and um, and our beliefs and our faith. So, what a freaking problem I have today. Anyways, so, when our babies are born, need to love them and take care of them and teach them kindness and tolerance but I don't believe we should try and confuse them at a young age if they decide that they are something different when they get older that is their choice in their direction but as babies we just need to love them as adults we need to just love them you know um about, you know, the whole changing of gender and, you know, males getting, changing into females and then playing female sports. I don't believe that that's right or fair. Um, I believe that their genetics are different and it's just not fair. I believe there's another way to go about it. If, you know, they want to make a transgender sport, great, great. But it's, you know, all these rights that we fought for and all these liberties that we fought for and these great things that we won, like, you know, just different women rights and whatever, you know. And I'm not overly crazy on the whole women rights thing, but as far as, like, um, women being able to vote, I mean, come on, yeah, that's a good one, um, and whatnot, and you know, women being able to go to school and women being able to work. Yeah, those are all great things. But I'm not like overly crazy on the whole thing where I think that there should be so many women at a job and so many, you know, of this color and so many of that color and, and you know, getting paid to go to college because of the color of your skin. Like, I don't, I don't believe in all that. I believe that that should all be on merit. If a whole job is staffed of men because the men were the best fit for the job, great. If the whole job is for people of color, great, because they had the merit for it, great, but um, my point is, you know, they have gone backwards, so yeah, great, we, you know, we don't want gay bashing, no, we don't, we want love and equality and acceptance of everyone, yes, so don't you think we're going a little backwards when someone changes into a woman and becomes woman of the year? Transgender of the year? Fine. Great. Great. But just because we're trying to do this whole acceptance thing, we don't need 
to go backwards in time and take away from the woman. That's just my opinion. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to agree with it. That's just my opinion. I think that's taking steps backwards. And when you erase history, you don't see the fights that we had for women to be able to vote. And, and I wasn't there. I didn't have to go through it. I didn't. But I do see what erasing history can do. When, you know, you're like, oh, this person did this, canceled. And I play along funny, funny, ha ha, canceled in my own way, you know. I canceled Coke at my house. If my children choose to buy Coke products, fine, whatever, but I will not buy them. Um, I canceled Disney, canceled. Say, I'm not gonna tell my children what they can and can't do. If they choose to pay for Disney things, they can, whatever. I'm not telling them they have to hate it. I don't hate it, but I am no longer going to support it. Um, the NBA, Nike, um, the NFL, things like that, I'm not going to support it. Canceled, canceled, canceled. <laughs> Do I think that it's crazy that they canceled Aunt Jemima? Oh, you better believe it. That's crazy. I thought that that was awesome. I, you know, thought of this cultural, cultural, amazing chef. You know, I think I had this, this picture of Aunt Jemima. The later generations are not going to have that picture of Aunt Jemima in their head. I don't think there was anything racist about it. In my mind, it was this awesome cook with this great syrup. And now it's completely erased. There's, there's so many different things that they're changing like that. It's just ridiculous. Just like um, our high school that was the Redmond. Um, I guess that was racist because I guess that's racist to Indians. Well, in my town, there's a whole lot of Indians that did not find that racist at all. And they peacefully protested it in their own ways and nobody cared. They changed the name of the school to the Cedar Reds. Um, in my opinion, I think that if someone uses a mascot, it is something that they're proud of. They are not going to use a mascot that they hate and that they want to degrade. Um, that would be weird. Like, would we use Jeffrey Dahmer as a mascot? Oh, hell no, we would not. We use things that we're proud of and that we want to put up high and, you know. And I think that the Indian culture in my town also thought that way. I think people who are looking for something to fight about want to cancel those things. Um, but that's just my opinion. My whole point of this uh, video this week, though, was that I, I think that we do have a voice and we do have a way that we can do things peacefully. We don't need to be violent. We don't need to be ignorant. Um, I do do some stirring of the pot a bit with my Facebook post uh, because I just think this whole world is, is gone mad. It's gone mad. And so I express myself with my t-shirts and my political posts and I do my own kind of cancel culture, but I'm peaceful and I'm not hateful. I think that we are all people. I think that color does not make you stupid. I think that some people, because of the areas they live in, have less opportunity. Um, some people, because of the way that they were raised, have less opportunity but I believe that has nothing to do with the color of your skin. I do. I think that there are people of every race that get a bad start in life, whether it be um, financially, how they grew up, they grew up somewhere poor. Um, I have family members from Missouri that are very poor, and I don't believe that they have the same opportunities that I've had in my life. And that's unfortunate, but they are white and they are not getting a free ride to college. And I'm not saying that all people of other ethnicities are getting that, but I'm saying that it is a part of society, that these are unfortunate things. Um, and that, you know, we can change.
change these things. Those are things we can work on. We don't need to work on it for a color. We need to work on it for a people. We need to help our poor. Um, in my, so I'm taking classes online at BYU Idaho. And last semester I had a project in my um, religion class where you pick something to work on. It's kind of like a religious thing. I picked charity and I basically bombed it the whole time. Like I did like little things here and there. I donated to um, the college fund. I, you know, did little donating here and there. And as I got to the end of my project and I didn't end up being able to finish my final project, I was just going to kind of throw some stuff in there and say, <laughs> you know, throw some little things in there and elaborate on the things that I did do and I procrastinated and wasn't able to get my assignment in on time and so my huge final for that religious class didn't get um, counted and so my grade point went down and I lost some points and whatever and I was like dang but I took that as you know what you didn't do the work like you were half-assing it I was I was half-assing it because my life is so crazy and busy or at least that was my excuse that I wasn't putting the work forth to get the real fulfillment out of the um, assignment and so I have continued to work on that um, and I've been it's the same thing as like how can I make a difference how can I how can little bitty me, you know, in this huge world make a difference? And um, charity has been a hard one for me because I have anxiety. And a lot, a big thing in charity is not it doesn't have to be money. It, it's time. Giving people your time and your talents and trying to help people. And um, that's hard. <laughs> I, I don't have a ton of time. But I, anyway, so I was like, I kept thinking and thinking. And if I knew found passion um, that is really close to my heart right now is the homeless. I am living in Reno and there are so many homeless people there and I've noticed a lot more um, in Utah as well um, and it just keeps growing and so you know I've, what can we do? I have seen some friends of mine do some things for the homeless and help people out that were in need and it really warmed my heart to be able to help the teeny bit that I got to. And so I thought, hey, why don't I show this to my kids and, you know, try and help some people out there. So I did a little post a while ago to get some donations so that we could make some homeless kids. And so we did that. Um, and we had a couple people donate. And I took my kids. They came down to stay with me um, after Easter for a week for their spring break. And um, we took the donations and then our own whatever and we went shopping. And it was so fun to take my kids and I had my son like look. I'm like look online, research it while I'm at work during the day and see what kind of things we should put in there. Because I mean I don't know. And you know in my mind you're thinking they need food, they need blankets, which they do. Definitely. But... Um, it was the things you didn't really think about. Like, um, they need toothbrushes and toothpaste and deodorant and wipes and, you know, hygiene. Hygiene's a big thing. And I thought that was really neat. And I tried to half-ass it again. And so I was like, oh, let's see online um, how much it is for them to just send those kits to me. And I was like, it was a lot of money to have them just send these kits. And I didn't really love what was inside. And so anyways, we got the donations and... We went down and bought all the stuff. We dumped it out on the floor and we had these little backpacks that we got and got to separate it all and load the backpacks. You know, I had um, Paisley and I had Tyler and it was a really awesome experience. And I could see that they really enjoyed it and they enjoyed, you know, oh yeah, this one needs this and this one needs this and oh no, this, this is out, but oh, we can give them this. And, you know, making sure that each person, that they, they thought of each of these backpacks as a person and they wanted them to get the things to help them. And I thought that was really awesome. And so we took these backpacks and we put them in my car. And um, it's 
instead of like really looking for homeless people, we just kept them there. And if we saw one, it was almost like the spirit guides you to these people that might be in need. I don't know. So when we had, right after we had got done shopping for the homeless kids, we had like our bags full of stuff in the trunk of my car, and we had the backpacks and all that back there. Um, we went to the Maverick to get gas, I think, and a drink. And there was a homeless guy on the side of the building. And he had his dog and he was just watering and feeding and loving his dog. And he had like this little cart thing that he pushed around that had all of his stuff in it. And um, I just thought, wow, this is the perfect opportunity. So I got in the trunk of my car and I hurried and made him up a bag, just tossing things from all the little bags back there and trying to hurry because I thought, oh my gosh, what if he leaves? And we're going to miss this opportunity. And um, we got to give that to him. And I thought that was really awesome. We, we were at the dollar store getting a lot of the stuff that we got. Um, we were like, my son was like, well, what about dog treats? Because, you know, a lot, some of them have dogs. And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. We only got one box of dog treats. And this guy had a dog. And so I was like, wow, this is the perfect opportunity. It was like, we were supposed to, you know, do this for him. And so anyways, we gave it to him. And he was super sweet, super grateful. And it was an awesome experience. And for me, I mean, being able to help him was great, but to be able to show that example to my kids, that there's ways that you can go out there and you can help people. Um, and that good feeling that it gives you inside that, you know, we can be a part of helping this world, even though it's just small things, there's things that we can do. Um, I encourage you to find a passion, find something to be passionate about and, and do it. Go out there and make the world a better place. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, like if you want to make a difference, you have to do something, but every small thing can make a big difference. You know what I mean? So boycott the things or protest the things that you're passionate about. Your passion doesn't have to be the same as my passion or the things that, you know, I think are wrong. You don't have to think they're wrong, but this is how we change the world and make it a better place and make it the world we want to live in. Don't support the things that you think or that you know are wrong. Um, so back to the, the homeless things, you know, um, one of the people that donated was this lady I work with and um, she was telling me about the homeless population in Reno and she told me that they all used to kind of congregate down by the river. They had their tents and all these things. And then another person came in and joined in and was talking to me. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, they all, they felt safe there and they had a place. They weren't hurting anybody. Well, they have such a large, like since COVID and everything, they have such a large homeless population. And besides the fact that it's a casino town, um, that tends to happen. People make bad decisions and they get broke, they lose jobs, you know, there's all sorts of factors, but there's a lot of homeless people in Reno. Um, drugs are a factor, different things like that. If you do decide to help the homeless be safe, take someone with you, but definitely find a good cause. So anyways, they're telling me that all these homeless people were down there and that the, the government or whatever came in and told them all they had to leave, that they could not stay there anymore. They're trying to clean up Reno. And they all had to leave and that if they weren't out within I don't know if it was 24 hours two days whatever time limit they gave them that they were gonna bring in big dumpsters and throw away everything now I want you to think for a minute about these homeless people they don't have a home they don't have a car everything that they have is these tents these trash bags full of whatever this is their whole life right there and they came in and threatened to throw it all away if they didn't leave. They don't have a home. They don't have anywhere to go. Well, their big plan was, is they were gonna make this big giant building and they were gonna help rehabilitate them and they were going to, you know, have a place they could stay and eat, shower, or whatever, you know. It was gonna be amazing. Well, then beautiful COVID hit and the brakes got pushed on that. So it's been over a year that this project has been halted and that they had wrecked the only normalcy, I, I don't really even know the words for it, but they had wrecked 
this one constant that these people had, you know? And if you think about it, they probably feel safe in numbers. And, you know, I don't know. I, and I just thought, that is really sad. And it even, it made me even more passionate about the whole homeless situation, you know? So I keep these backpacks in my car. Um, I think we were able to make 10 of them. And um, let's see, when my husband came down, he came down like a Thursday or Friday of that week. Um, we had gone to North Reno, um, I think partially in hopes to see some homeless people because you get excited. You want to, you know, you want to try and help them out and whatever. And so we went there. I was showing them where I donate plasma and hoping to run into some homeless people. Well, I saw one, and so we turned in, and there was like five or six of them there. And we got to pull up there and hand them out to them. And they were all really grateful and super nice. And they're all, hey, just know, you know, you're always safe around us. And God bless. And super nice and super, super grateful. And it was a super heartwarming experience. And it was awesome, again, to be able to show my kids. Um, how it, that good feeling that you get when you help somebody else that's less fortunate. Um, and I think that we have such a culture of being scared of the homeless and, you know, I really want to get to know, um, this culture of people. And I know everybody's got a story and that's kind of my whole thing that I've done on here is the whole glass houses. I have the whole merch and all that crap. Um, because I feel like we all have our story and we all have our circumstances and I believe that everybody is the way they are because of their circumstances, the way that they were raised, the conditions, the things that happened to them in their life and, and all that. And so, um, in, you know, screwing up my whole project and finding this new passion in my life, um, that's something I want to know more about and I want to keep helping. So, um, had one backpack left. I hadn't given any out, I don't believe. Yeah, I hadn't given any out in Cedar City. Um, I'd given all nine out in, or we had given them all out in Reno. So today, I was heading back home. And as I was heading out west, there's an on-ramp going um, south. And there was a shopping cart full of stuff and a lady that had like a hoodie on and like some sweats, but it looked like it was uh, thin, not super warm. And she had her hoodie on and kind of, and it was pink. Her whole jumpsuit was pink and she was cold and she had this little puppy, or I don't know if it was a puppy, but it was a small dog kind of right there that she was trying to keep warm that was inside of her hoodie. And she was sitting just crouched there next to the freeway and her belongings. And I got excited because so I'm like, oh, I have one more backpack. I can give it to her, you know, maybe help her out. And so I whipped into this parking lot and I go over and I hand it to her. And I felt like I didn't want to just give it to her and leave. She looked really sad and whatever. And I don't know. I think she was probably in her 30s. Um, she looked young. And I said, are you okay? And she starts crying. And she's like, no, I'm not okay. And she had told me, thank you. And I was like, what's going on? And she said that she was in Vegas and this guy brought her down here. I don't really remember the whole whatever about it, but and she said, I think he was trying to kill me or something. He had this hatchet. I don't, I don't know. The story was kind of weird. She said that she had a husband there, but maybe she thinks the husband was trying to kill her or had hired this guy to kill her or something. I don't know. It was, it was really crazy. And I just felt terrible for this woman. And she says, I just, I want to go back to Vegas. I want to get home. I want to get out of here. They had put me up in this hotel and the hotel kicks me out. And so here I am. And she's just sitting there freezing, you know, and oh my gosh. I'm like, I am so sorry. I hugged her and, um, you know, I was like, good luck and left. And I was like, man, I try and think, you know, because. A lot of people and myself we see these people out there and we're like they're probably druggies and if they wanted a job they could get a job and um, 
they probably are making more money than I am by standing there and people just giving them cash and they're not working hard. And, and uh, my father-in-law, seriously, such a baby today. Um, he had told me once, he, um, we were talking while we were at camping and he says, when you see them, you're not supposed to judge that Jesus wants you to help everybody. And so I've tried to keep that in my head. Like, don't try and figure out why they're there and what they did and how it's their fault. Because the whole glass house is because you don't know what got them to the place they're at. And it's not your place to judge. Jesus would want you to help them and Jesus would help them if he was here. So, when I left, I was like, I just felt really guilty. How could I leave this woman on the side of the road? And so anyways, I told my husband, he's like, well, did you give her some money? And I was like, I didn't have any money. All I have is a debit card. And he's like, oh, Nate, that sucks, you know? And so anyways, I decided I'm going to go to Maverick. There's a Maverick right here. I'm going to get a coffee and then I'll get some cash back. And I'm like, oh, wait, you know, she looked like she was cold. She, I'll get her a coffee too. So I got her a coffee and I was like, whatever the max is on the cash back, that's what I'll give her. So I got that and I went back and she was still there. Like I was half hoping that she was gone because that meant she was on her way home to be safe. You know, hopefully if you get it with the right person. And um, I gave her her coffee and the money and whatever and told her, you know, it's not much, but I hope it helps. And she was super grateful. And I left and I was like, man, what can we do to help? What can we do to do more? You know what I mean? I like, I think, I wish there was like a bus station there. I could have bought her a bus ticket to get back to Vegas, you know? Because what if she gets into a car with somebody crazy and they hurt her, you know? And then on the other hand, it's like, what if she's crazy? You know, when she hurts somebody else. And I don't know. It's hard. And we live in a crazy world in a crazy time. But. Here we go, be cry, baby again. Um, I encourage you to love everyone around you and try and help regardless. Um, if you have money on you or feel like maybe you could get some uh, food cards or whatever, you just need to help those around you and love those around you. That will make the world a better place. So, anyways, you are not helpless in this crazy time there are things you could do um start with that and let's see where it goes uh thanks for watching i should probably pay attention to the road because i can't see my map and i've been talking for a long time and i could totally be going like 100 miles in the wrong direction so i'm gonna get off this i love you guys i strongly strongly encourage you to do something do something peaceful do something loving bye